I know the goal is to shake my hand on draft night. And that's a fantastic thing. It's the greatest part of my job to welcome future players into the league. So let's talk about it, what you have to do to get there. First of all, just by virtue of the fact you're here, that means you're the best of the best. That's what this is, the top 100 camp, the top 100 high school basketball players in the United States. So let me stop there and congratulate you on that. That in itself is an amazing accomplishment. There's millions of kids, young people your age, out there playing basketball, and you're in the elite of the elite. But now the question is, how can then you rise to the very top of the elite to come to the NBA? And I'll say one thing, as I mentioned, so I've been with the league, I've been commissioner for about eight years, but I've been with the league for 30 years. And what separates the very best players in this league, and a lot of people think it's just their God-given skills. Like all of you, obviously, some of you have, you came here because you're the most athletic, you're the tallest, you're the best ball handler, but that's not enough to make it into the NBA. There's lots of people who have those skills. What separates the very best is that they're the hardest working. And I've seen, I was in the league with Michael Jordan, I was in the league with Kobe, you know, with Ricky Brown, with LeBron, with KD, with James, you go down the list. What makes those players the greatest players at Thompson is because they're the hardest working. There are no shortcuts. And the hardest working, what you're going to learn over these few days here, is hardest working doesn't just mean you spend the most time on the court. It means that you're paying the most attention in these courses you have to do. It means you're thinking about your body, you're focused on sleep and nutrition. Day one was definitely not how I, how I wanted it to go. I definitely didn't play like Dusty and I didn't play like, you know, the way that I know that I can. It was definitely tough for me, you know, uh, mentally after the games, just to, you know, like know that I didn't play to my full potential. Like that's the worst feeling like as a basketball player is when you know what you can do, but you don't do it. I mean, that's kind of how I'm feeling uh, after this first day. But, you know, I got to get back up on the horse and I got to keep going and I got to finish this camp strong. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to figure this out and, and go back tomorrow and be myself. Just introduce yourself real quick. What up, everybody? I am Pooh Jeter, not Jeter, um, is Jeter. Been a professional basketball player now going into my 17th season with the NBA G League Ignite. Screen by Mika. Gets the switch. Pull up. Hand in his face. It doesn't matter. Pooh Jetter. Big top. Button. Welcome back to the set. We are pleased to be joined by Pooh Jetter, who played for G League Ignite team. A veteran played all over the world. You know how hard it is to make it in the G League. Top 100 is definitely a uh, a platform, or I should say like a program that the NBA provides for the top 100 players in the country. But the beauty that I loved about it is the coaches that were at the top 100 are players, where we could definitely learn the coaching system and also be able to give back information to the ones who are up next. Um, that, that's like the beautiful thing that I loved most about NBA Top 100, that is ran by the Lucas family who are NBA, former NBA players, and have a blueprint of how to get there. And they surrounded these young men uh, with that same type of uh, characters in this basketball game of, you know, of, of how to make it. You know, me being from LA, Pooh, like, wanted to look, look after me and make sure that I was good and make sure, you know, that I was, like, comfortable with what we were doing uh, on the court. And so he, he, he texted me and we had a whole conversation about what I was feeling. And I'm looking at, like, during the games, I was looking at his facial expressions and his, like, his language, and he was trying to get it. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey, I had to send him a text. Like, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to make sure that you're on, on the, one of the top players at this camp? Because we need it. Because so many other players from our city is looking at him. We know the potential Dusty have, you know, and I don't want him to lose 
that confidence at all. You know, like, okay, you're going through this. Now let's adjust. Like the same thing we would do in life. Let's adjust and see, like, what can we do to make this situation be better? So let's learn. And I have to be fair. Like, we have 12 players. Oh, no, we have 10 players. Like, yo, five in, five out. Because everybody deserves an opportunity. You have six minutes to show all these college scouts and NBA GMs what you can do. But, like, yo, I'm not, like, I'm not going to play the other ones because every, you're supposed to be ranked higher. And I'm off all that. Like, it's basketball. Everybody deserves a fair opportunity, you know, and... And but people bought into it, you know, and people cheering people on, and that's what it was. The energy was amazing. taught me so much this weekend, like on the court, even in between games, like we would go to the side basket and he would, you know, teach me like pick and roll reads and, and things like that. So I definitely learned a lot of stuff from Pooh and, and yeah, he was super helpful this weekend and, and yeah, a big part of the reason why I played well uh, to finish off the camp. We're going to announce our 2022 Top 100 Camp All-Star Team. If you look back in the archives, it's pretty amazing what percent of our All-Stars go on to illustrious and successful careers in the NBA. To honor our All-Stars this year, we're going to bring up John Lucas, number one pick in the draft, 15 years in the NBA, three-time head coach, and he's the guy that, that is the main reason why you're here. He selected you. So let's give John a round of applause. Thank you, John. Guys, protect your house. Think about who you're letting into your circle. Build a circle of greatness. Not just anybody can get into your circle. Find people that make you better, that always have your back, that are pushing you to be the best you can possibly be. Don't worry about the social media. Don't worry about the haters. Remember, the lion doesn't concern himself with the opinion of sheep. Show me what that is. What is that? So right here we have the 2022 All-Star Team MBPA Top 100 Camp. Uh, first team, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. yeah. First team trophy. How do you feel about getting that and everything? 
I feel pretty good. I'm excited about it. I think it feels even better than I than it would have just because I started off so slowly and I was able to like get back up on the horse and play how I know I can play. So it feels pretty good. I was always good in LA. You know, the rest of the world didn't know me, but everybody in LA and Southern Cal, they knew my game, you know. So the respect I was having, you know, from my peers, you know, and as I'm saying like, oh wow, he got that offer? Oh cool, like, oh he got that offer too? Like, I knew my time was coming. I just couldn't doubt myself. And once I like, like with Dusty, I know Dusty work ethic is amazing, you know? But you gotta really want it, you know, and, and deal with, hey, this is what it is. Like, you have no control over who gets picked for McDonald's or who goes to there and this. Man, we have no control over that. But what we do have control, and one of, like, which is most important that we need to is ourself, you know? And as we continue to like go through whatever in life, the happy times and low times or whatever, we still gotta be true to ourselves. So whatever you're going through, whatever, build a team, find out what you can do to uh, get out of that, but enjoy it. It was a time, give thanks in all circumstances. No matter what happens in life, man, give thanks and move on. You know, so if it's you having a bad game, figure it out. If you're having a great game, figure it out. You know, and just succeed and just try to do what you can do to be a better you. Oh, 
<laughs> what did I just do? Show me why you can't be found. That's all unreasonable. I know you. Alright, my bad, my bad, I got you now. Bo is sick. He's never getting hard ever again. NYPD, NYPD, when it's on, that's who you get, huh? NYPD, LAPD, NYPD, that's your motherfucking clique, huh? NYPD, LAPD, NYPD, you a motherfucking snitch, huh? NYPD, LAPD. Alright, I'll stop playing, I'll stop playing now. Niggas wanna shine like me. No, I'll stop playing now for real. I hopped on the plane at LAX with my dream in my car to get bro, bro. It's like slowly like getting louder. <laughs> this shit is so quiet. Let's go hard as it can go. can't just play back to back to back to like nobody can do that everyone needs you know time to rest your body and your mind I feel like all these tournaments are such high pressure uh, situations that sometimes you need to step away from it and just regroup and uh, yeah I just wanted to rest my body and, and my mind It's a lot of work being a camp counselor. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Can you zip it up? What? Can you zip it up? Yeah. You got it. Can you catch more air on a wakeboard with that thing? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah get on there, son. I did it like once when I was like six. Bro, my feet is way, my foot is way too big for this. Jet ski really ran out of gas. Okay, one, one, two, two, 
Ten swords and shot each other. If you think this tale is tall, ask the blind man who saw it all. All right, so Eric, is this the storm? Yeah. <laughs> so, which way can you? That's tell? the only thing that I've ever memorized. Oh, okay. That's no, do are your um? Can you tell which way it's moving? So we're yeah. right there. The black. Oh, so we're right in it. We're, we're Doppler six thousand. We're under, but it's not heavy. Right? It's pretty heavy. It's about, to, it's about to get extreme! Look at my app, look at the app. Could have heard Daryl talking. I heard what is that guy? Daryl was awesome. He was literally like a character from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> He's really oh, awesome. Oh, awesome, the home of Kurt and Are you kidding? That's glass. Go in towards the yeah, shore. Dustin, that's glass. What is glass? Eric? Glass. Glass is the condition of water known as a flat, mirror like finish that gives you a perfect su surface to ski or wakeboard. Glass. Mom, take videos of her. I will. Actually, can you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you get that? Calvin, did you get my fall? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Stay, stay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You look 
My heart is on lock in the key It's right in your pocket, you see All sex, no sex I ain't tryna hold you back I saw who bought you that I don't want to scare them. Oh, wait, oh, wait, kiss, Skyler. Calvin, film that for Cinema Park. Skyler, you can't eat the duck, okay? Don't eat it. Mm -hmm. You'll see when I come up. Whoa. Look at this. You see this trail of rocks? Is that on purpose? Who would do that? Do you see that? Yeah. How did how did that happen? Great Daryl, we've been Daryl again. We got him to put the boat in. This is the pontoon boat. It was some trouble getting it out of the garage, but because of the system, the genius system that this man created to store the pontoon over the winter, we were able to get it in. He's fixed it up, the motor's running fine. Now let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the nature. Okay, it worked the whole way? Yeah, it was great. Very nice. Watch your back, are you okay with your back? I'm good. I want these fish to nibble on my feet. They, your feet are too gross, they don't like that. Oh, trust me, they like. <laughs> They're just checking them out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in and get it for you. you hear them saying hog rider over there? <laughs> no. They're saying hog rider. What? Can I jump over? Calvin's getting up on two skis today. Actually, two skis. Oh no. Wakeboard, wakeboard. Yeah, yep. yep. This lake life is my real life. This is what I should be doing all summer. So if you can make that happen for me. This is my Midwestern roots. This is my, um, the, the place I am the most happy is here. This is a perfect day where you have a little wind, a blue sky, and then glassy, beautiful places to for you to learn how to ski. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah but like, what made you decide to start doing this? Like, what's his backstory? I mean, my dad did it when he was young, and my mom came here when she was little, so I kind of just... I've been doing this longer than I've been playing basketball, so... So this is like your little vacation before Peach Jam? That's exactly right. You know, just get away from it for a little bit. So you can get right back into it. You me? Yeah. Cal, tell me what you're about to do. Oh, right now I'm about to wakeboard for the first time. I learned from the Stromers family how, yes. how it's done, you know? Yes! It's yeah. weird because I'm in, I'm in front of the camera, not behind it this time. That's right. Uh, your back is flat, your knees are bent. You let the boat pull you and drag you, and you slowly want to turn as you come up. But you don't want to stand up too fast. You want to let it, you want to keep your legs bent until you start planing. And then once you're up, you want to turn, and then, then it's like snowboarding, kind of. And then my weight's on the back, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Not like completely back, but like more back than front. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? You have any idea what he just said? All I heard was this, that, and then I just said yes. <laughs> All right, hit it. Cal unfortunately has passed away. <laughs> no, don't stand up to it. Yeah!
attempt. He went outside the lake. Yeah. And he ate crap, but, uh, but yeah. But he's got the stuff, doesn't he? Got it. He's got an honorary stromer, am I right? He's got the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, let me hear your thoughts on what happened. Well, first, I'm hella exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. This is no joke. After that, it was a great experience, honestly. Catch this. Because I wanted to at least get it down at some point. Which you did. You can now check it off your bucket list. Now I feel like a stromer now. Yes! That's right. One last comment on what you thought. That was excellent. Good job. It's definitely a great experience. Right, where, where are you going after this? After this, I'm going to... No, you're supposed to say I'm going to Disneyland. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to tie up the uh, the tube onto the jet ski so that Skyla and Dusty can go on the jet ski. Now we're trying to figure out if you're going to drive this, uh, and who knows what can happen. Could be anything. No, I'm not going again. I mean, it's been here since I've been coming here since I was little, so, um, you know, it's run by this girl named Kathy, and she feeds all of us, and uh, we know when to go because there's a big bell, and they ring it, and then everyone comes and they go feed us the dining hall. So it's really cool because we don't have to get our own food. We can just get out of the lake and come here and eat at the dining hall. And it's kind of like a special place because we've all been coming here. My mom has been coming here since she was little. And then she brought my dad over. And now I'm here and my sister and Skyla and everyone. So yeah, it's cool. Can you get a little salad? Can I get Skyla something? I need two plates. Me? Every summer, since I was a baby, every single year. Yeah, normally we stay for at least two weeks, but 
since Peach Jam and all the basketball, I can only come for one. But yeah, I kind of wish I was able to stay longer. Like, how do they all come here? Yeah. I think all these families, have, most of these families have been coming here since she was little. That's how she knows everyone here. They all have cottages. Four generations. Yeah, four generations. In so we kind of all know each other. You want me to drive? Huh? Can you even drive? I'm not Do you really? You know that? No. Yeah, this is the gym I come to every single most days that I'm out here, like since I was little. I would come up here and shoot. Just so I could keep my jumper right. But yeah, no, I came I came here every year. Every year since I was little. So this is the pavilion right here that I slept in right after we won Peach Jam. Um, it's kind of like like the storm house when there's a big storm. We come in here and we sleep and we watch the storm. But now I slept in here right after we won Peach because I had COVID and I didn't want to get them sick. So I slept in here because we all got COVID after Peach Jam. But one morning I woke up and I came outside and I came right here and I fainted. I fell down this whole flight of stairs right here. And I was at the bottom when I woke up. It was scary. The COVID stuff is no joke. It's full moon. Wonderful, Archie. Are you freaking? No. I don't think they're cheering for the moon over there. They might be. I think they're doing their own like sparklers and stuff. 
<laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> God, that's huge. What the heck? You can see more when you stand. This feels like a show. Oh. Yeah, the best thing. It looks like a pumpkin. What are they playing over there? That sounds fun. Yeah, Go watch What's that game? Way. Cornhole. There's probably some cornhole going cornhole down. Can we try yeah. cornhole? You could do that tomorrow, oh you guys. Gosh, look at that thing. Wait, it's huge. Are there little men underneath pushing it up? Did you know that the moon is man made? Well, I got it. Do you believe the moon landing was fake, Justin? No. That's what some guy told me. I almost got abducted by aliens. Don't. You got abducted? When did you almost get abducted? Here we go. It's, it's, it's a super long story. I, oh. I can't get into it right yeah. now. Yeah. You can't commit to it right no, now? No, it's, it's, it'll, it'll take an hour and a half. <laughs> Just tell me where you almost He gets very got nervous about aliens. I was in aliens. Uber. Oh. Up in, up, in, uh, up in the Hollywood Hills. Okay. And I knew that that was my last AAU games that I'd ever planned, so I, I was trying to make the most of it. And and it was hard to like, I mean, people were telling me like not to play like on my ankle or whatever, but like I just couldn't because that was my la that would have been my last AAU game, you know. So I had to keep playing because I just, you know, I've been with Why Not and those guys for so long that I. I, and it's so much fun playing with those guys because they're all my best friends, so. Yeah, and then you sat there. Did Russ say anything to you when you were there? Yeah. Russ was talking to me about just, like, pushing through it and, and like, all the mental stuff that comes with, like, playing on a bad ankle. And, and, and it's just tough to, because it's tough mentally to not be able to, like, move how you want to move and, and perform how you want to perform, but... You know, he was just helpful, just just talking to me, just pushing, telling me push through it, and it's gonna be okay. Just keep hooping and just keep trying to have fun, which is what I did. It was so devastating. This is the first time he's had to deal with that in the sport, which is like, it could be the most important time, and you're not at your best. Um, he could have made the choice to not play on it. Um, we weren't sure what to do, but it's not really Dusty's personality. He still um, put himself on the court, um, and he was really hurt. Like, he was actually really hurt every single one of those games. Didn't make a bunch of excuses for it, but when you started to hear people say stuff about how he was playing and stuff, it was so frustrating because it was like, if you had any idea 
what he was playing on, you'd know that it was amazing he was even on the court trying to help the team win. I just wanted to finish out strong, but it was it was so much fun. I miss it already. Like after season, every single year since my freshman year, I've gone straight into AAU. So this is the first time I've actually like had nothing to do other than train, which is pretty weird. Like it's never been like that before. So yeah, it's like bittersweet. It's 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 sad that you know I'm not playing any AAU anymore, but it's nice at the same time to just get the opportunity to sort of like rest my body and my mind after like such a long high school career. I mean, I was just working out, honestly. When I got back in August, I was pretty upset like at everything that had happened. So I was working really hard, just trying to get ready for the season. Like, you know, I just wanted to get things back on track after we lost. Um, so I just was working out a bunch, you know, just locking in on this season with the guys. But there was like some uncertainty here and there, like not knowing what was gonna happen, like who was gonna come, as far as like Caleb and Merce and, and some other guys that were supposed to come. So it was sort of just like a time that was like super uncertain, but I was just working really hard. Stop. 